Hey, welcome back to Business 163, Personal Finance. And now we are opening up Module 11 on taxes. Holy smokes, this is a very, very big topic. Uh, and while, you know, you may look at this topic and say, oh, great, I think I'd rather have dental work than have a whole module talking about taxes. I understand that at one level. And yet this is a very crucial uh, topic in your understanding of your personal finances. So many of our decisions are made based on our tax bracket, um, tax implications and consequences that we will have to face at the end of every year when we file our taxes to uh, the federal government and with, at least in California, paying state income taxes as well. So let's jump into it jump into this module and we're going to start out with a little bit of a history lesson because understanding the history of where taxation has come from in the United States helps us to better understand the context of where we're at now. Alrighty. So as you can see from the title slide, this very first video is on the history of taxation here in the United States. Let's get started. We can say that taxation is part of the very foundation of our country. The United States is founded on disagreements about taxation. Now, some of you may remember from your U.S. history lessons, if uh, you were so lucky to have them in high school and um, didn't fall asleep, <laughs> that the United States began as a British colony, right? A British colony uh, that was uh, constantly paying taxes to the British government. And uh, the colonists revolted against English Parliament when Parliament granted the East India uh, Trading Company a virtual monopoly over the British tea market in an effort uh, to prop up that company uh, that once uh, was controlling the majority of the commerce of the British Empire and now had fallen upon bad financial times. And so they granted the East India Company a monopoly over uh, the British tea market. And uh, as a result, complaints about the taxes that were owed and the tariffs that were imposed on December the 16th, 1773, American patriots in Boston, disguised as Native Americans, um, illegally boarded a British shipping vessel and dumped 342 chests of tea into the harbor. And those of you who are at least vaguely familiar with tea, you realize it's not good to store tea in the ocean. <coughs> right. So they basically destroyed an um, enormous amount of tea. This was colloquially known as the Boston Tea Party. What a cute name. And that is one of the events that ignited the Revolutionary War. So it is not an overstatement to say the history of the U.S. is bound up in the topic of taxes. Now, after we won the War of Independence, well, from the very beginning of our country, the federal government has always collected taxes. Primarily in the beginning, property taxes, which were then, those, those monies were spent on infrastructure of our new country, roads, canals, similar kinds of projects. Today, as we fast forward in today, uh, the home that people own, homeowners, uh, that home is typically the most important asset held by most Americans. And because of property taxes, that home is taxed on an annual basis every single year. It doesn't matter how much money you make. It doesn't even matter if you're employed or not. You're going to get a property tax bill every single year. And since 1950, individual income taxes have increased as well. It went to a very high rate in the 60s and since has dropped to a top marginal tax rate of 37%. We'll talk about what that means, a marginal tax rate, when we do a little bit of calculation to show you how your income tax is actually calculated. But for now, just realize not only property taxes, but federal income taxes as well. And just to get sort of an idea how most U.S. households fall in terms of uh, individual income taxes, about 80% of U.S. households are in the 15% tax bracket or lower just to sort of get an idea where folks are at. All of the rules about taxation are contained in the federal tax code. Well, in 1913, you can see from the little diagram I've given you here 
on the side, that little infographic, all the way back in 1913, the federal tax code was all of maybe 400 pages long. And now, uh, well, you can see this graphic up in 2014, it had ballooned up to 74,608 different pages of rules and regulations. This is why it is virtually a profession unto itself trying to understand all the ins and outs of taxes. And I'll be quite honest with you, of course, in this little module, we are not trying to be, make you into CPAs or tax experts. We're simply giving you a fundamental understanding of sort of how taxes work and how as an average citizen, you can sort of get an eyeball or at least a concept of what, why you're taxed in a particular way and kind of where those tax monies go. Uh, as with the module on investment, if you really want to get a good, clear, detailed understanding of taxes, consult a tax professional. Uh, I am not a tax professional. This is not purported to be giving you tax advice. This is just giving a basic understanding how taxation works in the United States. All righty, so back to our slide. So uh, let's talk a little bit then, next slide, about federal income taxes. Since 1950, individual personal income taxes have been the primary source of revenue for the federal government. And you got to realize it took a few tries for Congress to be able to put in place federal income tax. And finally, in 1909, the 16th Amendment was passed by Congress. It was finally signed into law in 1913, four years later. Uh, and, well, quite frankly, we've been paying income taxes to the federal government ever since 1913. All right. That's one really big chunk of taxes that we pay every single year. Where else does tax revenue come out of our paycheck? Well, here's one. Social Security. Social Security was signed into law in 1935. It was established as a way for retired workers to get some sort of partial continuing income. And you should realize Social Security was never designed to be the primary source of income for retired Americans. It was just some income to supplement what else you might have set up, right? And so when you see on your pay stub FICA taxes, FICA is an acronym that stands for the Federal Insurance Contributions Act. And ever since 1937, if you're being paid on a regular paycheck, your employer is taking out FICA or Social Security taxes to fund the Social Security system. All right. What else comes out of our paycheck? Well, there are payroll taxes for Medicare. What is Medicare? Medicare that's a term that can be a little confusing, but ever since 1965, when the Medicare bill was signed into law, Medicare is health coverage for almost all Americans age 65 or older. Okay, so if you've ever wondered how your grandpa uh, could afford medical insurance when it was hard for you, or maybe your parents, or maybe you, if you are uh, age 65 or older, realize that there is a provision uh, from the federal government for Medicare. And Medicare now includes not only basic health coverage for older Americans, but also prescription drug spending as well. Now, in addition to Medicare, of course, when you think about med medical insurance, there's now Obamacare, or more, uh, more uh, formally, the Affordable Care Act of 2010, right? And the, the, one of the things that ACA did was it made it illegal for an insurance company to deny coverage for pre-existing medical condition. That was huge. Um, and it also created a marketplace where folks could purchase private health care insurance if they did not have an employer who provided health care insurance for them. And this, uh, there's a fair number, uh, uh, there's several million Americans to whom this affects. In fact, over the last several years, the Affordable Care Act seems to have made health care available to an additional 18 million Americans. And that's a big number. Now, but for reference purposes, you really have to understand, um, about 49% of the country's total population receives health insurance from their employer. That's 156 million Americans receive health, every, who uh, every year receive health insurance from their employer. So ACA helped, uh, the Affordable Care Act helped about 18 million Americans uh, get health care that they wouldn't have had otherwise. 
So it sort of puts it into context. Has it helped a number of Americans? Absolutely. Did it make a huge difference in the overall picture of health insurance coverage? Um, not really, because already 156 million Americans, about half the country, well, we get health insurance from our employer. So um, just to sort of put in context how uh, the Affordable Care Act has made a dent in the insurance uh, challenges in the United States and how perhaps it hasn't yet. All right. All right. So that's hopefully a little bit of context. And then finally, uh, one of the landmark decisions in 2013, uh, Obergefell versus Hodges. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but really what that landmark decision by the Supreme Court did was the Supreme Court decided to permit the marriage of same-sex couples. Now, you may be saying, wait a minute, that's just about uh, marriage. What does that have to do with taxation? Well, the Supreme Court decision to allow same-sex couples to legally marry in the United States led the IRS to rule that those married same-sex couples could then submit federal joint tax returns. And because of the favorable tax sta status given to any couple filing joint married, as a result, most married same-sex couples will enjoy a lower tax bill as a result, perhaps an indirect result, but as a result of the Supreme Court decision of 2013. And so that sort of brings us up to the current day, right? You sort of see how the a very quick survey or overview of taxation in the United States brings us to this point now, right? So now you understand why um, if you're working uh, and your employer is withholding some degree of uh, income taxes from your paycheck, as well as you're paying into the Social Security system and Medicare, why those things exist and what they go to fund, all right? So I hope that's helpful just as a way to kick off module 11 on taxation. We'll see you in the next video.